The Leander class, or as they be designated, the Type 12i, was the most numerous and long-lived frigate class built by the Royal Navy, as well as being exported to five other navies. These ships would be designed off the preceding Whitby class, or the Type 12s, and due to the Whitby's successes, the Admiralty wanted to exploit this, and so the Leander class would be born from this. The hull and steam plant would be carried over to the Leanders, however the improvements were the addition of a long-range early warning radar, the SeaCat surface-to-air missile system, improved sonar systems, and the addition of a lightweight helicopter fitted with homing torpedo. As stated earlier on, these ships were copies of the hull and machinery of a Whitby class, so they'd be 2,960 tons as standard and 3,500 tons fully loaded. They'd be 113.4 meters long, with a beam of 12.5 meters and a draft of 4.5 meters. They'd be powered by two Babcock and Wilcox steam turbines, powering two shafts for 27 knots. However, they could cruise at 15 knots for 4,000 nautical miles, the equivalent of sailing from Plymouth to Ascension Islands. However, they would need to replenish every week for food and fuel to keep her complement of 260 ratings and officers fed. Their armament would be different after about 1970, so they'd all complete with the same armament first. However, because they were built in three different batches, I will cover each batch in their separate sections. So, the Batch 1's vessels would consist of HMS Leander F109, HMS Ajax F114, HMS Dido F104, HMS Penelope F127, HMS Aurora F10, HMS Euryalus F15, HMS Galatea F18, HMS Arethusa F38, HMS Nyad F39, and finally HMS Cleopatra F28. The vessels would be laid down between April 10th, 1959 and June 19th, 1963, in Holland and Wolf, Yarrow, Vickers Armstrong, Camel Laird, John Brown and Co, Swan Hunter, Scott Shearbilling, Yarrow again, J.S. White and Co, and then finally, Her Majesty's Naval Base, Devonport. Funny enough, in that order. Now, they will be launched between June 28th, 1961 and the 25th of March, 1964. They would also finally be commissioned between the 27th of March, 1963 and January of 1966. They would all sport the original armament of 1. Dual 4.5-inch Mark N6 naval gun located on the forecastle. These weapons were capable of 260 degrees coverage with an elevation from level to plus 80 degrees. These weapons were capable of 10.2 nautical mile range with 16 rounds per minute from each gun. 1. Quad Seacat Launcher. These were capable of Mark 0.8 out of a maximum range of 5,000 meters. This weapon system was a platform guided weapon system and was also the first surface to air missile system fitted to a warship. It, however, wasn't that great. Two 20mm anti aircraft guns, capable of 450 rounds per minute out to 1,000 yards at a muzzle velocity of 820 meters per second, located one on the port side and one on the starboard side. When Leander was built, she was fitted with two single 40mm Mark VII Bofors cannons, and these were fitted instead of the Seacat and 20mm guns. However, these weapons were capable out to 120 to 330 rounds per minute. Each mount was able to traverse 92 degrees, with a capable firing elevation of minus 20 to plus 80 degrees. The weapon was also capable to fire at 1,021 feet per second, out of a maximum range of 6.48 nautical miles. And finally, one triple Mark 10 Limbo anti-submarine warfare mortar, effective out to 914 meters. This would be located in a well deck just aft of the flight deck. To round out the weapon systems, it's always best to remember she also would carry a helicopter, and as such, it would be a Westland Wasp helicopter. Now this helicopter was 12.29 meters long, 
with a height of 2.72 meters and it was capable of 104 knots at maximum speed but would cruise at 96 knots. The helicopter had a range of about 263 nautical miles with ordnance on board, giving it a long range to attack ships and also submarines. The radar fit would be as follows. One type 965 Papa early warning radar operating in the Delta Band. This radar is capable of detection of contacts out to 243 nautical miles. The beam width is about 12 degrees horizontally and 40 degrees vertically. This radar had a slow data rate and the range resolution was poor, resulting in low flying aircraft being obscured by background land. 1. Type 992 Quebec Early Warning Tracking Radar This was operated in the Echo Fox short band. This had a maximum range of about 30 nautical miles. 1. 903 Fargator Radar operating in the India band frequencies. This was capable out to 15 nautical miles and would be the Fargator Radar for CCAT. 1. Type 974 Navigational Radar operating in the India slash Juliet bands with a maximum range of 25 nautical miles. And finally for all of our sanities, the last radar was a Type 978 Navigational Radar operating in the Echo Foxtrot bands with a maximum range of 35 nautical miles. The Batch 2 vessels would consist of 6 ships completed with the same weapons and radar fits as the first batch of vessels. The only difference would be in the machinery. This would be a change from the batch ones by replacing the Babcock and Wilcox boilers with Y136 boilers for better fuel efficiency. Now these vessels would be HMS Phoebe F42, HMS Minerva F45, HMS Sirius F40, HMS Juno F52, HMS Argonaut F56, and finally HMS Dana F47. These vessels would be laid down between the 3rd of June 1963 and December 16th 1964 at Alexander Stephen and Sons in Glasgow, Vickers, Her Majesty's Naval Base Portsmouth, J.I. Tornycroft, Hawthorne and Leslie, and then finally Her Majesty's Naval Base in Devonport. These vessels would be launched between the 8th of July 1964 and Halloween of 1965. These vessels would then enter service between April 1966 and October of 1967. The batch 3 vessels would consist of the final 10 vessels. These vessels again had the same radar and weapons fits as the preceding batches. However again the differences would be the introduction of the new Y160 boilers placing the Y136 on the batch 2s. But an interesting one is the increase in beam of the vessels to 13.1 meters, an addition of 30 centimeters either side of the keel. So the colloquially named broad beam Leanders would be as follows. HMS Hermani F58, HMS Andromeda F57, HMS Jupiter is F60, HMS Banchette is F69, HMS Charybdis F75, HMS Cilia is F71, HMS Achilles is F12, HMS Diomeda is F16, HMS Apollo is F70, and then finally HMS Ariadne is F72. I'm going to apologise now for uh, the awful pronunciation of those Greek names. But anyway, continuing on. So these vessels would be laid down between January 27th, 1967 and November 1st, 1969 by Holland and Wolf, Vickers and Her Majesty's Naval Base Devonport, along with Yarrow, who would build Hermione, Jupiter, Achilles, Diomeda, and also Apollo and Ariadne. I would like to uh, apologise for my awful Greek pronunciation here. So, we're going to continue on. So, by 1970... The Batch 1 vessels had been in service for roughly about 7 years, give or take, on which ship. Now, they had been on deployments all around the world, from the West Indies to the Mediterranean, to the Persian Gulf, to the Far East, and even trips to the South Atlantic were made. But it was time for a midlife refit on the Batch 1s, and even some of the 2s. 8 of the 10 Batch 1 vessels would be given a so-called Ikara conversion. Now, this would result in Leander, Ajax, Galatea, Aurora, 
Nyad, Euryalus, Arafusa, and Dido losing their 4.5 inch main gun and having an extension built from the forward part of the superstructure to house a well for an Akara anti submarine missile. Now, Akara was cabled out to about 10 nautical miles. Now, it fires at a 55 degree elevation with a maximum speed of 443 miles per hour. Now, it would be a command driven weapon system, and I'm not going to lie to you here, it wasn't that great. Didn't really increase the anti submarine warfare capabilities of the ship at all. But, uh, aside from the Akara, the 965 radar was removed as it really wasn't needed on this ship anymore. So it was replaced by the Type 994 Echo Foxtrot ET radar. On the bright side, however, the space that was removed from the ship that had been taken up by the 965's receivers and computers was replaced by the 1970s version of a server for ADORs and Link 10 combat system and data link systems. Now, the astute amongst you might be wondering, hmm, Penelope and Cleopatra, what happened to those two? Well, these two Batch 1 vessels weren't upgraded or degraded, depending on your views with the Akara system. However, these two ships, including all of the Batch 2 vessels, would be upgraded by fitting Exocet. Now, Exocet is a French anti-ship missile with a range of 22.6 nautical miles. Now, Cleopatra would be the first ship to undertake this refit in 1973, but the 4.5 gun was removed and a base for the Exocet launchers was put in place. They would have four Exocets facing forward, two on the port side and two on the starboard side. At the front of the base, a raised section was input for a Seacat surface-to-air missile. Now, this would increase the lethality of these ships twofold. Additionally to this, the ship's hangar was modified to carry a Lynx helicopter as well as an additional sea cat atop the hangar. In terms of the other vessels, Penelope would be the trial ship for Seawolf, meaning her 4-5 was removed, but by 1978 she would also be fitted with Exocet. The rest of the Batch 2s would undertake their refits after 1974, with Phoebe starting this off. Juno would be the only ship not receiving this refit, as she was converted to a training ship starting in 1982 and finishing in 1985. The Batch 3s would also get in on the refit action, with, funny enough, ending up with two different weapon loadouts after the refits, with Charybdis, Hermione, Jupiter, Andromeda and Cilia following the same refits as the Batch 2 vessels. However, instead of a Sea Cat launcher, Sea Wolf launcher was fitted in front of the Exocet launchers. Additionally to this, the radar systems would completely change. Now mounting the Type 967-968 Delta Band ET radar, feeding information to Seawolf. Type 975 India-Juliet Band surface search radar, as well as the Type 910 fire control radar for the Seawolf surface wear missile system. Now you're probably thinking to yourself, okay, that must be all the batches, all the refits, jobs are good. Uh, no. So, the Leanders would actually have another one. So, at least, well, five vessels, mostly Batch 2s, would be converted to take a total ray sonar, as well as one being from the Batch 1s. Now, to that end, Phoebe, Cleopatra, Argonaut, and Sirius would all be fitted with the Type 2031 passive search very low frequency towed array and the last ship refitted would be the batch one ikara modified ship hms arathusa right after 13 minutes of talking about refit after refit after refit and some funky different versions of batches of ships it's now time to talk about their service careers so during their lengthy service in the royal navy the leanders were employed during the Indonesia and Malaysian confrontation in 1963-66. to 66. The 1973 and 1975-76 Cod Wars, in which the latter of which, HMS Diomede, suffered severe damage with a 30-foot gash in her hull after being rammed by a pesky Icelandic Coast Guard gunboat. However, this damage was exacerbated due to the fact that the ships had very thin hulls which made them less suited for the duties than a offshore patrol vessel. 
Now, fast forwarding a couple of years, four members of the class saw action during the 1982 Falklands War, with three Batch 2 conversions, the Argonaut, Minerva and Penelope taking part, with Argonaut experiencing 15 air attacks in San Carlos Sound, where she would be hit by a number of bombs and cannon fire. It would be stranded for six days, with two bombs lodged in the Ford Seacart magazine and the boiler room. Aside from that, the first Seawolf conversion, HMS Andromeda, was one of only three Seawolf fitted frigates available for the Royal Navy's newest missile in the war, and served during the war as a critical goalkeeper, the last line of defence against the carrier HMS Invincible during the war. The five unconverted gun armed broad beamed Leanders arrived in the war zone in the last week of the conflict, and immediately after would serve with the post war task force led by the brand new aircraft carrier HMS Illustrious. During the conflict, apparently reports state that the Argentine naval dive team made a serious attempt to actually try to place a limpet mine on the Ariadne in Gibraltar during the conflict. Not entirely sure if that's true or not, but doesn't sound that realistic per se. Now it is to note that the last Leander commissioned in 1973, which would be the Ariadne, was fitted with special electronic warfare systems for countering said Exocet missiles, and the Argentine services may have anticipated Ariadne was scheduled for service in the total exclusion zone, which in fact did not happen until after the end of the war. Now it's also good to note that the two Chilean vessels that would be built for Chile would also be fitted with these special electronic warfare systems. So aside from the two Chilean vessels and HMS Ariadne having jammers on board, the ships performed excellently in Royal Navy service, with relatively low noise levels giving the 2031i towed array a range of about 100 nautical miles, better than that of the more advanced 2031 Zulu sonar that was fitted to the Type 22 frigates. However, all Leanders in Royal Navy service were decommissioned by the early 1990s due to the ship's aging design and high number of crew. Now, as I alluded to earlier on, these ships were exported to many different countries. Now, two of which would be the Royal New Zealand Navy and the Chilean Navy, receiving their vessels, named the Leander and Condor class respectively. The Royal Australian Navy, the Indian Navy and the Royal Netherlands Navy would all build license build vessels of these ships called the River, Nilgrilli and Van Schwiek class. So before I mentioned the export ships, I did mention that the ships in the Royal Navy service would be decommissioned by the early 1990s. And I'm going to allude to that here. So, by name, we're going to discuss what happened to them. So. Leander. She would be sunk as a target in a missile X, being sunk by three Exocet, one Sea Dart, believe it or not, and one bomb in 1989. Dido would be sold to New Zealand as HMNZS Southland in 1983, but she would be paid off in 1995 and sold for scrapping. She'd be towed to the Philippines to have her boilers removed for a rubber plantation of all things. After she was towed to Goa Beach in India, she would be scrapped. Ajax would be sold for scrap in 1988. Aurora would be sold for scrapping in 1990. Galatea would be sunk as part of a naval exercise in the North Atlantic. Euryalus would be sold for scrap in 1990. Nyad and Arethusa would be sunk as targets in 1990 and 1991 respectively. Penelope was sold to Ecuador in 1991 as the Presidente Eloy Alfaro, but she would be subsequently scrapped sometime after 2008. Phoebe was scrapped in 1991, Cleopatra and Minerva were scrapped in 1993, Juno was scrapped in 1994, HMS Sirius was sunk as a target by the submarine HMS Barton in 1998, being the second to last Leander to be sunk by the Royal Navy in a Sinkex. HMS Danae would be sold to Ecuador in 1991 as the Moron Valverde. She would be decommissioned in 2008 and put up for sale a year later. 
to be scrapped between 2010 and 2011 in Ecuador. Banchette was sold to New Zealand in 1982 as the HMNZS Wellington. She would, fun enough, end up being sunk as an artificial wreck in Wellington Harbour in 2005. Achilles was sold to Chile in 1990 as the Ministro Zentino. She served until 2006, where she was put into reserve. She would, however, be washed out to sea by a tsunami of all things. She would unfortunately be scuttled in 2010 because she had posed a hazard to navigation at sea. Diomede was sold to Pakistan in 1988 as the Shamshir until she was retired by pre-2007 to salvage parts for her sister ship, the Zulfukur, I think. Apollo would be sold to Pakistan in 1988 again as the Zakur, I think. However, she was retired in 2007. She would be sunk as a target in March of 2010. And then finally, HMS Ariadne would be sold to Chile in 1992 as the General Bukendo. She would be decommissioned and sunk as a target in 2004. Now to finish off this very, very, very long video, if you want to watch an interesting program on these vessels, I would recommend the BBC TV drama series Warship. I hear it's quite good, and you can probably find it on the internet or YouTube somewhere. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, so that's the end of that video. Hopefully you learned something new, because I most certainly did. Now, if you want to go and support the channel, there is a link in the description below to the Patreon page. I would recommend doing it, but it's up to you. Also, if you want to come and talk to me, there's a link in the description for the Discord channel. There's a couple of good guys over there. We talk about a wide variety of stuff. So yeah, so thanks for watching, guys. Hit that notification button to stay up to date with what I'm uploading. And obviously, give it a like, give it a subscribe if you really want to, and comments are always good. I like reading your comments. So take care. Catch you next time.